friends welcome back to my channel today i am going to discuss about preliminary cast diagnostic cast are very helpful to further evaluate the anatomy and condition of the residual ridges generally these cast are made from preliminary impressions made with irreversible hydrochloride or alginate in stock trays good diagnostic cast should include retromolar pad and border tissues as well as tergo maxillary notch and the posterior parietal seal area so these are the well made axillary and mandibular preliminary impressions in the first picture please note that all the anatomical areas of the ridge have been accurately recorded and even though the border thickness is a little excessive and the border length is excellent this impression closely resembles the final impression and as such it will allow the fabrication of an excellent diagnostic cast and eventual custom impression tray in this picture it shows mandibular preliminary impression not only records all the desired anatomical areas but also it exhibits excellent border extensions so these are well made preliminary maxillary and mandibular impressions in this picture it shows the initial pore of a preliminary impression uh, not that the small nodules have been placed on the surface of the material once this initial pore of stone has achieved its initial set it is inverted into a second pore of stone to form the completed diagnostic cast and these nodules will help to provide additional strength to the two pore cast so these nodules can help in additional retention okay here in this picture it shows that maxillary and mandibular preliminary impressions have been inverted into a second pore of stone to form a base for the diagnostic cast okay so here it is inverted into a second pore of stone to form the base of, uh, for the diagnostic cast and not that the stone on the maxillary cast has been allowed to harden while in direct contact with the impression tray this is incorrect and this tray will be difficult to separate from the cast and in this picture it shows trimming the retention nodules flat will stabilize the initial pore when inverted into the second pore of the stone okay in this picture it shows the bottom of the cast is the initial surface trimmed using a model trimmer so here the bottom of the cast is the initial surface trimmed using a model trimmer and the bottom should be trimmed so that the ridge crust are parallel to the bottom or bench top and the thinnest portion of the base of the cast is approximately 12 mm thick or half an inch thick okay and this picture shows uh, once the base of the cast is properly formed the sides of the cast can be trimmed to create land areas approximately 3 mm or 1 by 8 inch in width in the labial and buccal areas and 6 mm posterior to the retromolar pads and the hamular notches the land areas will later be trimmed vertically to create vestibules no deeper than 3 mm or 1 by 8 inch according to another textbook after making the preliminary impressions the preliminary cast poured with model plaster irrespective of the impression material used the recommended water and powder of plaster is dispensed in a rubber bowl and mixed and this is poured into the impression in small quantities from one posterior end allowing it to flow into the other under vibration okay in this two pictures it shows pouring of the cast from one posterior end and allowing to flow okay this is maxillary and this is mandibular and uh, okay here after filling up the entire impression and the initial set is attained okay here it is the 
port maxillary and mandibular cast on initial setting with grooves for the retention to base okay after that a base former is filled with plaster and the poured impression is inverted onto it or otherwise a block of plaster is poured on a tile then the poured cast is inverted onto the block of the plaster okay poured cast is inverted onto the block of the plaster and excess is trimmed off and this is the maxillary and this is mandibular okay and after the cast is set it is immersed in a bowl of warm water to retrieve the cast from the tray okay okay then the casts are trimmed as per recommended dimensions for the base and land areas okay and this picture shows the cross section of a maxillary cast here it is the ridge ridge which is parallel to the base okay so the ridge is parallel to the base then the sides are perpendicular to the base this is the base this is the sides okay these are the sides and they are perpendicular to the base and the land area is 2 to 3 mm at 45 degree here it is 45 degree and uh, the land area is 2 to 3 mm okay and the angle is 45 degree and here the sulcus depth it is 2 mm below land area and the base of 10 to 15 mm so the base should be 10 to 15 mm and the sulcus depth is 2 mm okay so this is the cross section of a maxillary cast here it is uh, showing the base of the cast that is 10 to 15 mm here it is the width of the land area which is measured on the cast which is 2 to 3 mm okay width of the land area and here it is the height of the land area measured from the sulcus which is 2 mm okay and this is the cross section of mandibular cast okay here it is the ridge which is parallel to the base as already said for maxillary and the sides are perpendicular to the base okay so the uh, mandibular cast cross section here it is the ridge which is parallel to the base then the sides are perpendicular to the base okay and the land area is 2 to 3 mm at 45 degree angulation here it is 45 degree okay and it is a 2 to 3 mm and the sulcus depth is 2 mm depth below land area and the base of 10 to 15 mm that is all about the mandibular cast okay here it is the height of the base which is measured on the mandibular cast okay height of the base is around 10 to 15 mm this is the completed preliminary maxillary cast and this is the completed preliminary mandibular cast that is all about the preliminary cast in detail in the next lecture we will discuss about various space the defense thanks for watching please do like share and subscribe my channel thank you